Hello, hello, hello everyone. How are you all? Thank you for being here. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, Kalimera Kalispera, wherever you are in the world. Today is the 4th of September. It is a Friday, so this will be your reading for uh, 4th, 5th and the 6th, everyone. So I want to thank you, first of all, for your support. Thank you so much for all that you do for my channel. The beginning to mid-September readings are all up now. Thank you so much again for your support, for those of you that are purchasing the extended. Um, as I do uh, read for another half hour on the extended readings. I'm trying to make these readings as short as possible and then never, <laughs> that's never happening. I know a lot of you don't have the time to be listening to me um, blabbering on for half an hour. Um, it's so much about the details. I'm a double Virgo, I've said it many times. I am trying my best to bring you the shorter readings for those of you that are always um, short with time. And we know, we all know that these times are very challenging. And I'm going to try and do that, I do promise. But first of all, for today and for whenever you receive this message, happy birthday, Virgo. It is your birthday. I will be talking the astrology at the end of the reading. Today I'm going to be doing a reading with the Botticelli. I also will be using the astrology reading cards. Okay, so um, different deck, different energies. I will be putting the links um, in the de description box below, the names of the cards and so on, and also the Lover's Path Tarot to look at love, as well as my handwritten messages. So let's take the divine spread, everyone. As I'm doing your reading, the moon is now in, um, it is transiting through the sign of Aries. And Aries is all about planting that seed, a new beginning. Aries can be a tough cookie. It is ruled by Mars. So emotionally, this could be someone that is either acting uh, Mr. Mrs. Tough, but this can also be someone that is wanting a to emotionally open up to a new beginning. The moon is right on Chiron. So Chiron is that open wound, remember. This could be a bit of a painful experience uh, around about the 4th of September, wherever you are in the world. Um, so... It's a very quick transit, so this could be a time when someone is open emotionally to speak about their any self-worth issues, any wounding, okay, uh, psychological, emotional, physical. Um, this can be a healing energy as well as the moon can be the mother. It's very motherly. So I think the cards are saying... Um, we're done. Let's take the divine spread for today or today, tomorrow and the day after. So around the 3rd, 4th, the beginning of September, nevertheless, or whenever you receive this message, let's have a look, my divine spread. So at the foundation, we've got Capricorn, we've got the devil. What is hidden from us is the nine of swords. Wow. In the recent past, we've got the Knight of Swords. Now, this fell out as I was pre-shuffling. So the Knight of Swords is quite important here. In the now position, we have the Queen of Cups. Crowning the reading and the trajectory, uh, what we're working towards is the King of Cups. And what I notice here with the Queen of Cups is that she's actually writing. This could be, she could be writing a message. She could be writing down notes so she doesn't forget what's going on. <laughs> she could be writing a letter. What's going on in the action and advice? We've got the Empress. Wow, she doesn't look too happy right here in this deck. We know the Empress is a mother. What about the outcome, please, Spirit? And we've got the Ace of Pentacles. 
And this is a gift from spirit. The angels are bringing something long-term, something tangible, physical, monetary, something of value. And this is a gift from spirit. What is going on with the divine? What's the message from the divine, please? I'm just trying to dig it out. It's trying to get away. We've got the Eight of Wands. Wow. Someone is having second thoughts of whether they should send out those love messages. These are love messages. Here is Cupid, Eros, the God of love. Someone is seriously thinking of sending out messages messages of love, desire, passion. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Four of Cups. Wow. Let me just put my phone on silent. That's better. So the Four of Cups, usually with the Four of Cups, we know that it's not an offer that is on the table, not something that someone wants to accept. It is something long-term. Fours are always about home, family, and something long-term for me. Beneath that is the Knight of Pentacles. We are in the Virgo season. This is my Virgo card. Virgo doesn't have to be a Virgo that you're dealing with. It's the Virgo energy. Something is slow, steady-paced, long-term, and it's been planned. We know that the Knights are all about action. Someone is coming in slowly. They're looking at the details. This is the time of Virgo. And we've got Chiron here, Seven of Wands. Here is Chiron, the centaur in mythology, who was wounded by his own people, and therefore he became the healer. And I'm getting the goosebumps as I'm saying this. He healed himself first because he was tragically hurt, and the wound was so major because it, became, it came from people that he loved, people that were his family. He considered them his family. Okay, and remember that Sagittarius is also a centaur. Okay, so I need to throw in the Sagittarian energies because um, we know that a centaur is half man, half horse. Remember, as I was just saying, the moon is right on Chiron. Someone is coming in with um, communication. They've done their homework. They've been doing their homework. They've been planning. Maybe this is an offer that's coming back around. We do have the King and the Queen of Cups here. So there is a lot of love here. A lot, a lot of love here. Now, it could be any sign, everyone. could be any sign. But we've got Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. We've got strong Earth here. Earth is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. As we've got the Devil here. Okay. Uh, Taurus, Libra is in the Empress here. She's an energy where there is expansion, there's creation, there's growth. I do see the Empress qualities as Aries as well. Remember that seed, that seed that is um, that is planted and it's going to at some point, it's going to sprout. We know that the Empress is someone that needs to be very patient as she will be giving birth. Now we've got, this could be a mother. We've got king and queen of chalices, and we've got a mother. So if this is a love triangle, we've got a divine masculine dealing with two different divine feminine. One could be a mother. The other one is not yet a mother. For others of you, this could be the same person. The queen of cups could be also the empress. Okay. Now, at the foundation, we've got Capricorn, so it's been hard. It's hard work. Okay, this could be a vicious cycle that you've been through over and over again. Here in the Botticelli, the devil is a little devil, so this could be a nuisance, a nuance. This could be anything to do with a child. Okay, as I do see, this is a child. Now, in the hidden position, someone is very worried there's a lot of stress and anguish with the Nine of Swords. Someone is praying, staying up late at night and praying that this darkness can shift. It's interesting that we've got the Nine of Swords bringing in that Tenth Sword, bringing in the ending of this suffering. Okay, so we've also got Aquarius, Gemini or Libra with the Nine of Swords. This is 
You know that nights are quick. They're all about action. We did have that Knight of Pentacles, which is slow and steady. The Knight of Swords is quick, so we've got two different energies where maybe something was very slow moving. Now the pace is picking up. Let's take... Let's take a sum of the astrology cards, the astrology reading cards. By Alison Chester Lambert. What's going on, please, Spirit? What are we dealing with? These will be in the Karma Dharma position. So we've got a zodiac sign here. We've got Taurus. The energy around you shows the abundance of nature. It is rich, earthy and productive, yet relaxed and slow. So Taurus is here. Taurus is all about our values. It's also got to do with what we have. So Taurus is described by the term I have. So it's all about how we feel are we provided for. Taurus is also the house of self-worth. Taurus is also the five senses. Let's take another card. We've got a planet card and we've got Mercury. How you think, communicate, write, talk and travel. So there could be communication. Mercury is transiting through Virgo. Someone's been looking at the details. They could be ready to communicate now. Mercury is all about business. It also rules Gemini, so Gemini is here as well. Now the North Node is in Gemini, remember, and Mercury is very strong right now. It's at the last degrees of Virgo, so it's quite amplified as there is a lot of strength. Remember that Mercury brings in messages. And we've got a zodiac sign, and we've also got Leo here. Here is the king. The energy is flamboyant, dramatic, proud and passionate. It focuses on the importance of self-belief. Wow, here is the king. What an amazing card. Now, what's interesting is that Venus is transiting through the sign of Cancer. She's very sensitive. She's at the last degrees. She's ready to move into the sign of Leo. So it's going to be much fun-loving, more um, playful energy, more flirtatious. There can be conversation where they... Things will be much lighter. Now remember that Leo and Taurus, very fixed. Taurus is fixed earth, so it's very stubborn. Leo can be very flamboyant and very egotistical as well. Uh, but there's strong passion. We've got the Mercury card, which speaks of curiosity. Okay? Curiosity, where our self-worth, our flirtatious, true love, uh, risk-taking connections are concerned. Remember that Mercury is also the messenger of the sun, right? Mercury always travels very close to the sun. So he's the messenger. He's bringing the, messenger, the messengers, the messages in for the king. So interesting. Let's look at love, everyone. So we have a fair bit of fixed energies. Fixed energies don't like change. And uh, Mercury is mutable. So whatever messages come in, they do bring change. Let's have a look. What do we have for love? We've got two cards. Let's take one more card. So, wow, okay. All right, we've got the Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. doesn't have to be. could be someone that is offering their cup. We've got the Four of Cups. Again, we've got that twice. And we've got the Ace of Pentacles. So, yes, this offer is coming back around. We've got the Four of Cups twice. Um, and if we put the Four of Cups with the 
fifth cup that this knight is bringing forth. It's all about our emotions, obviously. We've got the king and queen. Um, this offer is coming back around as it was offered at some stage. It was a knight offering that that cup, that emotion, their heart to the other person. Now we, um, the knight has become a king. So, yes, this offer is coming back around. It is something long-term. We've got the Ace of Pentacles twice. Very important. Let's take more cards. We've got emotion. We've also got earth, and earth is very stable. It's very slow-moving, remember? Let's take a look and see what else is going on. Let's look at the devil. And we have the Ace of Swords. So either putting an end to a vicious cycle, because we know that with the Ace of Swords, this is all about severing ties. Um, and the Devil can also be very dark. So this could be clarity coming after the darkness. Remember, uh, Saturnian energy is very heavy. It's very iron-like heaviness. And look at the... Um, Look at the um, the strength in this truth, in this sword. Look at the strength there. So there's a lot of decision here on communicating truth and maybe even someone breaking their silence. Let's look at that Nine of Swords. And we've got the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is usually Pisces, and we've had a full moon in Pisces recently. And this is Spirit, spirit bringing you... Um, choices, I mean, Seven of Cups is things are up in the air. This can be a sign or a synchronicity coming from an angel. Look out for those. This could be an indication of truth coming through after confusion. Let's take another card. And we've got the Page of Cups here. So the Knave of Chalices is the Page. So Piscean again. Pisces is unconditional love, remember? And this is maybe an apology that's coming through or someone's coming in in a very playful way, maybe to apologize. And this could also be a sign that an offer will come to you at some point. Let's have a look. We know that children can bring people together. They can also uh, keep people apart because the knaves... Knaves are messengers, but they're also children. Let's have a look at that Knight of Swords, which is difficult. I don't like the energy of the Knight of Swords. And we have justice here. So justice, justice is balance, harmony, it's Libra. Um, and this is someone trying to come into harmony um, through truth, I would say again, because if you notice, the Knight of Swords holds his sword of truth um, very, you know, up in the air. So it's as though someone is trying to cut through through the chase, through the illusion, through, through the lies, through the injustice. Now, this could also mean some sort of an argument in the past with a Justice card. This may have been... Something unfair. Someone was coming through very unfairly, I feel. Let's take another card on that. And we've got the five of wands. Yeah, there was there was an imbalance in the past, but, of course, justice trumps the other two cards. So balance and harmony will come through, um, through democratic and equal giving and receiving. Let's take that four of cups which was the general energy. Let's have a look at that. And we have the Eight of Cups. So the Four of Cups turns into the Eight of Cups. Let's see. Let's take another card. And we've got the Death card. Wow. It looks as though someone gave up. They actually gave up. We've got the Death card, and this is Scorpio, which is a situation that needs to transform. Now, the Eight of Cups, of course, someone was not happy with that Four of Cups. They were not 
accepting that cup. So they left, um, someone left. If someone was waiting around for an offer to come through, um, they've been through this once, twice, three times. I feel as though they left this situation because death needed to take place. A transformation needed to happen here. Okay, so death is a long process and we know that what comes after death is the process of transformation and a new beginning. So let's have a look at what's going on with this cup that this queen is holding and she is making notes. We've got a few cards that opened. The top card is the Seven of Wands with Chiron, but I will put it away as the Seven of Wands. Remember, whatever is going to be communicated will bring healing to a situation. Let's see what fell out. And we've got the Two of Wands here. So the door opens. A choice has been made and the door opens. Someone's made up their mind to walk through that doorway to take a chance, we know that wands are always about creating their fire, the fire element. Let's have a look at the king of chalices. And we've got the card of Leo here. And this is strength. And strength says obviously that there needed to be trust, courage. And it's a karmic number. We've got number 11 here. In the Botticelli, the strength card, uh, which speaks of confidence, strength, control, trying to control a situation, but also patience. Looks like this King of Cups needed to go through some sort of a karmic, walk through a new karmic door before they can um, trust that they've got the power to manifest this connection. So it's really interesting that we've got a two on uh, the Queen of Cups and we've got an 11, which is also very similar to a two on the King of Cups. Let's take this Empress. And we've got the World card. We've got Venus here. Venus, which is um, standing in her beauty here. There is an ending to a major cycle where Venus is now born. She's usually in the womb. For some of you, this is happening for you right now. You've planted the seed in the past because this is in the action and advice position, which is saying your patience has proved to, um, to be very successful. We know the world card is an ending of a cycle, but it's also a card of success and remember Venus is anything that we love anything physical tangible we've got Venus here okay Venus double Venus here with the Empress so there is a lot of love there's a lot of value and there's a lot of prosperity here okay with the seed that maybe was planted in the past it's taken time for others of you, the seed may be planted now and you're going to have to wait for this cycle to end. Okay, we're not all on the same timeline. Re please remember that. Let's have a look at the one, have a look at the Eight of Wands in the Divine Position. And we have Temperance. And Temperance is Sagittarius, so it could be something to do with worldly matters, things to do with truth. This may have to do with the lockdown as well, as Eight of Wands can mean flight travel. The doors have been closed. Now, Temperance is saying that if you're wanting to move to another area of the world, it will take a little bit of time. Spirit is working on it. So um, Temperance, again, also speaks of patience. We've got one, two, three cards of patience. Three cards of patience. Okay, as Temperance does say that angels, the angels are trying to work something out. They are trying to turn that lead, that heaviness of Capricorn into gold. Okay, and there is gold here. 
as you could see with Leo and just on that note Venus moving through the sign of of Leo will bring a lot of gold and a lot of riches to our life so remember that and that's probably why it just it's not by chance that I chose the Botticelli today which is a gold um, deck okay so gold is precious um, gold and they do say not all not everything that glitters is gold and yes that can be true for some of you but we do end with the ace of pentacles here let's have a look we have the two of cups everyone if this is not a love connection then this is a very strong bond this can be um, two people on the same page if it's a friendship it's siblings doesn't matter it is a card of balance okay and coming into balance remember we've got the card of Libra we've got the Empress here absolutely beautiful cards let's see also temperance which is all about balance what's at the bottom of the deck and we've got the king of swords which is someone that's very truthful remember he holds that ace of swords if you were dealing with someone that was not open to truth not open to emotions we've got Aquarius Gemini or Libra here okay so we've got Aquarius and we've got the star here so this is beautiful absolutely beautiful this is speaking of a wish fulfillment where truth is concerned of course now the king of swords could also be someone who is in the legal field someone who wears a suit someone who um, is all about truth it's all about justice it's all about being fair and just at this time what's beneath a star and we've got the three of pentacles so for some of you you may be, have been dealing with a water sign and a, an air sign remember that the king of swords is someone that will tell you the truth now I'm not reading reversals for some of you this may have been someone that was very confusing very deceptive because they were hiding their truth and it can be of course another side to the king of cups always we need to speak of everything because this is a general reading remember that please so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to take some Lenormand just to see what's going on because this is a different system with a Lenormand and it gives us different messages take some cards we've got the birds so news is coming through after a moment of pause and sacrifice Wow we've got the mice which can be um, some sort of a loss the mice can also be um, some sort of a nuisance okay this could also speak of gossip uh, finding out um, some news from others things to do with gossip something that could make you feel nervous okay let's see what else we've got and we've got the fox now the fox can speak of it's very similar to the seven of swords so the seven of swords remember is someone that's being sneaky but if you can actually see the cards here the fox is looking straight back at what happened in the past so what went wrong what was negative what was maybe even unspoken as the fox is an energy which is trying to um, it's trying to be intelligent right but someone is trying to manage a situation here that's got to do with past pain with past gossip past information maybe that was um, also lacking now this is a number 14 and it was a karmic cycle that had to happen we've got a 23 here which is 11 on the hour clock okay so 14 again is all about remember it's temperance 
Let's have a look at what's at the bottom of the deck. And we've got the book, the book of knowledge, the book of secrets. And we've also got the scythe. Now, the scythe can mean that we are cutting away something that not, was not working for us. But the scythe also, as you could see, we've got wheat here. The scythe is when we harvest, when we receive. So there is a cycle. It is a 10. There is a cycle that is closing up here. The work that's been done can be rewarding. Um, and also whoever we've needed to cut out, whatever we've needed to cut out of our lives will bring us the abundance and the new beginning. We've got a J here, everyone. It's interesting um, that we've also got the book and the book um, can say that this could be a story that is coming to a completion as well. Um, and something that is coming to our understanding. So understanding why someone reacted in a particular way um, that they did. Okay, so let's take a couple more messages. Let's take a couple more messages. Let's have a look at the foundation with the Ace of Swords and the Devil. We have the Star card here again. So, yes, you are sitting on a wish fulfillment. It will come around, uh, especially when there is truth and there is no fear around this because the devil is also fear. Let's have a look at this page of cups. What's that about? And we've got, wow, we've got the three of swords. Yes, so there, need, there needs to be an apology because someone has been going through heartbreak. This is a disappointment, okay, where someone's been treated, mistreated, I should say, mistreated, a lot of worry around things that were unknown, things that were unclear. Someone expected the worst, maybe. And also where people, because three swords means three people in a situation, and that can also speak of the gossip or information that was not correct. Let's look at the recent past with the um, justice card, the Knight of Swords and the Five of Wands, and we've got the Emperor here. The Emperor, which is standing very strong. Look at that sword. Look at that sword. So we've got the Emperor and the Empress here. Let's take on the Queen of Cups, who is very, very intuitive indeed. What is she writing down? What notes is she making? What messages is she writing? Remember, she's she has the Two of Wands and we've got the Chariot. So there is movement here, physical, um, emotional movement and overcoming any obstacles, okay? And there is a very strong decision here as look at the Chariot in the Botticelli. He's not sitting, he's actually standing. And that is a very major um, and very strong decision that she's made and she's very powerful now. She's coming through very powerfully indeed. Let's have a look at this King of Cups with the Strength card. And this King of Cups obviously has Leo. And we have the Moon. Wow. So obviously... And I feel very strongly that if this is not the Piscean Cancerian energy in his in his chart, let's say, this is someone that was maybe deceitful in the past. Now, because the moon is fears, either there were fears around um, connecting, okay, speaking the truth, trusting, or there were matters hidden in relation to family or a mother or a child, or anything to do with family, a family situation. Remember, the moon is also Pisces. So this King of Cups may have had to surrender because of a family situation. Remember that the moon is also Pisces. So whatever has been hidden, whatever this 
King has withheld will be shown in the next couple of weeks with that full moon that happened recently in the sign of Pisces. And this could be a chapter that is ending. Let's have a look. We've got a couple of cards of endings. Let's have a look at the Empress with the World card. And we've got the Five of Cups. Remember how I said that the Empress doesn't look happy here. So the Empress is looking at things in a very negative way. Remember that the Five of Cups always shows those three cups that are spilt. What she is doing is looking, focusing on the past and not on the future. But what this area here is saying is that a cycle needs to end before uh, this Venus can be born. So what I mean by that is having the patience that this will happen. Yes, there is success here as long as there is no negative um, influence, no negative energy being sent towards her beliefs. So the way she sees things is going to bring in the positivity or the negativity. So there is free will here. So yes, that's what it's all about here. Um, Five of Cups, if you notice in the Botticelli, they're all standing. They're not spilt, but five is still an imbalance. So that's very interesting. Let's have a look at the final outcome here with the Ace of Pentacles, Two of Cups, and we have the Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is the Capricorn energy. Seven is also the card of spirit, remember? And it's all about looking at what we've invested in. Okay, is it worth investing more time here, more energy? If um, we put the Ace of Pentacles with the Seven, that's Eight Pentacles, which says someone is willing to do the work now here on this connection. Could be both parties. Let's take another card. We've got the Tower, everyone. I love the Tower. Absolutely love the Tower. Let's take another card as there is a transformation happening here, a major, major shift. And we've got the Nine of Cups. So there is the wish fulfillment. Both people want the same thing. There is a, a major awakening here, a major awakening. And this is for both people and the people that are around them as well because this is a major shift that this connection is going through. Now I'm going to say I've got a remote message. I've got the King and the Queen of Cups. I've got the Empress and the Emperor. What I feel here is that this could be, if this is the parents, I do feel that this is a karmic situation that the children are going through. This is like the children needing to resolve the parents' karma that was unresolved. Now, these parents may have moved on, okay? So you know if this is your own personal story. This is a remote message, remember? And I felt that I, felt that I needed to mention this, and especially because we've got, we've got the card of Cancer and we've got the card of Capricorn. As I have said in my some videos recently, the the uh, eclipse that happened on the 5th of June, which was on the axis, Cancer Capricorn, is being activated now in the beginning of September. So we know that eclipses are all about eclipsing something out of our life. Could it be a chapter? Could it be karma? Could it be anything? Because the eclipses happen right on the nodes. So it is fate that is uh, playing out, okay? So eclipsing karma out of your life could be what is going on here. And remember that the emperor and the empress, they have gone through their own lessons, okay? So this could be, for others of you, I mean, this could be... Um, What did I want to say? This could be that a lot of work had to be done. There needed to be a lot of patience. But of what I feel I need to say is that this may be a, an older generation that I'm talking to. Uh, 
um, we do say that the heart never ages. We always, the heart never ages. The body can age, it can mature, but the heart is also, the heart is also like a child. We do have Leo here. Leo is the child that wants to go out and play. So this could mean that someone's gone through many lessons in this lifetime, many um, tests where they've had to prove their love, but the heart is still young. You get what my drift is. Let's take one last card here. One last card here. And we have the Three of Pentacles. So this is expansion and growth. Okay, Three of Pentacles is um, the work that's being done is noticed. It doesn't go unnoticed. What's at the bottom of the deck? Wow. Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords. So the darkest before the dawn, I'm going to say, and I do feel that this energy will change in the next couple of days as Venus will move into the sign of Leo in two days. Okay, so that's what's going on here. This does turn into the ace. This is like the wheels of time, the wheels of life go round and round. Okay, that's what I feel I need to say. You've been through this before. Okay, this is the darkest before the dawn and severing ties with anything to do with karma of the past with narcissism if you've been dealing with someone that was quite narcissistic for some of you this could be you letting go of this connection moving into a different connection where you are valued as much as what you give you receive and that's what I feel I need to say we do have the magician here again which is mercury okay the ace of swords the truth comes after darkness and the magic is in our own hands everyone okay six of pentacles can mean that someone is needing to go through legalities separation and divorce divorcing with their past i don't know how that speaks to you in particular but let's take a couple of my handwritten messages I do feel a very strong sense of devastation here with the um, Ten of Swords. And this Empress has obviously suffered um, some sort of a loss. I need to uh, mention that as well. And that's why I see that she is um, not happy. So, um, but I do feel that her loving, nurturing uh, nature will come through and she still will be there and I feel that uh, as we know the mother that nurtures the child she she will drink the poison she will accept the pain she will accept the her mistakes but she will still come through. Now this empress here doesn't have to be an actual mother. This is Mother Gaia, right? Whether it is your own mother, whether there is a motherly figure that's in your life, um, whatever the case, this is motherly love and this is Gaia. Um, I do feel that she's going to do the right thing at the end of the day, okay? So we need to believe in that. Remember, she's a three, therefore she brings expansion. She will co-create, okay? She will co-create and she will bring the birth to the world, to your life. As long as there is patience, there is forgiveness and there is love. Let's take the messages. 
We are so different and I don't know if this could ever work out. I don't know what to do. I couldn't stay with you because I felt as though I was suffocating. I want to be free. The physical distance between us is so great. I need to decide if I can do this. Time will tell. Wow. I want you in my life for today, tomorrow and forever. Wealth is not important to me. Wealth for me is connecting to my other half on a spiritual and emotional level. Nothing else matters. One more card. I have loved you from the moment I met you, but the problems in my life don't allow for me to follow my heart right now. It won't be fair on you either. So there's many messages here. I know people love these messages, so do accept these messages as they um, resonate for your own personal journey. Uh, we've got 13, 15. 15 is the devil. We've got 14, 17 is the star. So uh, 15 and 17 is 22. Uh, no, it's 15 and 17 is 32. 32 adds up to a 5. 5 is the number of the Hierophant. What this is saying is if there is no value in your connection, it's time someone may be breaking free, um, doing things in a very innovative way. Remember, 5s always bring challenges. It's an imbalance, but it brings changes in. And... Um, the Hierophant can also be some sort of a commitment. It does say also that, yes, you've got to do things in the traditional way, you know, do things by the book, but it also says that keep the faith, trust in spirit, and know that spirit is also there to provide for you. This could mean support from the family, whoever needs it, and the Hierophant can also speak of commitment, a marriage. I want to take a peek at what's at the bottom of the deck and we have you will always be in my heart I can never or will ever forget you and fours always speak of something long-term family. So I want to thank you so much for all that you do for my channel, for liking, sharing and subscribing everyone. Stay on for those of you that are interested in the astrology. I will have a quick chat on that. For the rest of you, thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. All right, everyone. For those of you that um, have viewed yesterday's reading, I did say that Venus and Mars, Venus moving through the sign of Cancer, uh, at about 27, 28 degrees, she is squaring over to Mars at the same degree. So it's an exact square. Um, it's happening right now, so this could be lover's quarrel. Remember that Mars in Aries is very strong, okay, and Mars is practically slowed down. Now it's going very, very slowly as it's getting ready to retrograde on the 9th of September. Venus is getting ready. She's at the 28th degree of Cancer, so she's very sensitive there. She's very nurturing, providing, very homely. Remember that Cancer, Cancerian energy is, I want to feel safe at home. I want to be happy in my surroundings. So it's a feel-good energy, but it's also someone who needs that motherly love, that protection. Now, Mars is the warrior, so... You know, um, it's a square, so a square is turning a corner. It's not easy. But Venus is trying to finish up as she's gone through a lot now. She's been right opposite Capricorn, and it's been very tough for her. So she's ready to move now in two days into Leo where the energy will change drastically. Okay, as I said in the beginning of the video, uh, we've got the moon moving through Aries in a couple of days. It will be in the sign of Taurus where it loves to be. But uh, before that happens, we're having um, Mercury will be moving into 
uh, Libra. So this is con conversation around uh, with other people, concerning other people, concerning relationships of all sorts. Remember that Mercury is very strong in Virgo, but it's at the last degrees. So the, this could be this could be um, because Mercury is in conjunct, so it's needing some sort of a change, a conversation, uh, a difficult conversation because it's in conjunct to Mars in Aries. So we know that Mars in Aries is very strong. So is Mercury in Virgo. So something needs tweaking. Uh, we need to be able to look at the other person's point of view as well and not put aggression or just be very nitty-picky. If someone is willing to have that conversation with you, don't go uh, being very nitty-picky and picking at every single little thing. Give the other person another chance to... Um, to bring their point of view to you so that you can understand where they're coming from and what's happened. Now, Mercury is also trining over to Saturn. So, again, those difficult conversations. Saturn is in Capricorn. Both Mercury and Saturn are very strong in their position, very strong in their convictions as well. And what is very important is that, yes, in a couple of days, as I said, Venus will be moving into the sign of Leo where we're going to have those fun times. This is risk-taking. This is I want to have a go at the casino. I want to gamble on, you know, and be very flirtatious with another person. This could be meeting someone new, having a lot of fun. Remember, Leo is the heart. This could be a moment of when, for those of you that are single, you could be meeting the love of your life. Yes, that could happen, of course. Now, the sun is still uh, at 12 degrees of Virgo. It is trining over to Uranus. So Earth with Earth in a trine, beautiful. For those of you that remember that Uranus can be very innovative, very scientific, um, doing things in a very different way, very eccentric way, breaking the tradition of Taurus. Taurus is very traditional. Um, it's Earth. They don't like change. It's fixed Earth. So remember that the sun in Virgo, the sun is not very strong in Virgo, so Uranus doesn't really like being in Taurus either. But together, putting the energies together here. Remember, Virgo is health. It's it's also doing the work. So a good connection where if we've done the work, something could show up out of the blue, something that will be of value for you. It can also be monetary. Remember, I've done the work. I've provided all that energy. Virgo is doing the work, okay, um, providing a service. Here comes the payout, Uranus in Taurus, money, okay? And what else did I want to mention? Very importantly, as I mentioned in yesterday's reading, yes, the sun will be trining with Jupiter. This is the most beneficial transit of the year, and that is happening on the 9th of September. So if your birthday is on the 9th, Wow, good luck to you and um, very, very positive, very, well, remember that Jupiter is very spiritual, it's all about truth. The sun will bring clarity, healing, uh, Jupiter will expand on the goodness of the sun and the sun transiting through Virgo, it's have you done the work, have you provided the service, have you trusted in that? The gifts are coming in, dear Virgo and dear Capricorn. So everyone's got Virgo and Capricorn in their chart somewhere. So where is Virgo and Capricorn situated in your chart? Good question, right? And Jupiter has slowed down as Jupiter is retrograde, everyone, and Jupiter will be moving direct. You who, hooray, in the sign of Capricorn, 
and that's going to happen on the 13th of September. That is the day of my birthday. That is the day that I will be announcing the winners for three free tarot readings. So, wow, I wonder what's going to happen there. Jupiter turning direct. It is blessings, but don't forget that Jupiter, once it's stopped because its retrograde motion is stopped, it is extra amplified. Remember, and Jupiter, of course, is trying to bring in the blessings. So absolutely wonderful, everyone. That's something that you need to know. I will come back again on Monday to talk to you about what else is going on. Let's have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Sending you many blessings, much love. Remember that next week it's Mercury, it's Mars retrograding, and that's on the 9th. So the day that the day that the sun trines with Jupiter, that same day is when uh, Mars will be turning retrograde. That won't be easy. Keep that in mind. So take the good and the bad. That's what life is all about. Sending you much love, everyone. Thank you again for your support.